Hey guys, Scott and BB here, and this is just a real quick thing because uh, I posted some shoe designs with my guinea pig sketch um, in a fractal pattern on some high tops, and I had a friend from school who really liked them and said, you know what, <laughs> my daughter loves lions, and I love art and animals, and I, of course I love lions, lions are awesome. Right? So I thought, hmm, maybe I could do a quick little lion fractal um, like I did with the guinea pigs. So I'll show my process. But incidentally, this shirt that I'm wearing, this is like the first silkscreen t-shirt I ever made. It is for some sleep music that I made and I still have it. It's called Sleep For Sure and it's out there for free if you wanted to search for it. It uses binaural beats or also isochronic tones to change your brain waves actually. Uh, into a sleep pattern, uh, it, like automatically works. It's awesome, but uh, I didn't invent that technology or anything. Um, that's a whole other story. So, anyways, um, this pattern here uh, is—it's uh, just a photo that I that I found, um, and then I in Photoshop I inverted it and color it blue. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw my sketch over top of this over the dark areas and then what's that that's going to do is uh, when I invert it the paint or the the pen marks that I make will become white right so all the light stuff so you'll see what I mean in a second if you're not quite getting it it's how I design all the silk screens okay so okay so you could sort of see what I'm doing right I'm painting the marker over the dark stuff and it's in blue because then when I change the channels to like a red channel, this blue will be invisible and I'll just have a black and white image and then I will invert it and voila, voila, it will be amazing and I will put it on the shoe. Progress update, getting there, just got to fill in all the blue areas with black patiently, nicely, and then invert it and see what we get. It is just about filled into what I want. I'm just going to have the head and I'm going to turn it into a fractal so I don't need to worry about the body and any of that other stuff. It's going to be exciting to invert it and see what I really have. Because remember, this is an inverted photograph. All right. Okay, so now that it's done, um, maybe I'll just take a picture of it with my phone like this. I'll just be like, boom, in fact, <laughs> let's see. Okay, I'll try to, maybe I'll just Take a picture right now. Boom. Okay, I took a picture. I don't know if it's going to be as good when I'm shooting video. Uh, but then, stand by. Okay. Now we've got our image in Photoshop. Incidentally, I used to teach Photoshop classes at the Expression College for Digital Art in Emeryville. Um, anyways, so we go up here. <laughs> it's turned into a Photoshop tutorial. And these are our channels. Normally we see our layers. Okay, um, but I only have this one layer, right? This is Photoshop. In this case, we go to our channels. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn off all the other channels except for blue. Now, when you turn off all the other channels except for blue, this blue that we printed in our design all of a sudden is brighter because the blue, the more blue you have, the more it goes to white in this grayscale image. Now what you want to do is control click into this window. I'm going to have to put the phone down because I couldn't find my tripod right now in order to do that. So hold on a second. Okay, when you control click in a channel window, you actually make the whole selection a grayscale selection. Okay, so what does that mean? That means now I can come into layers and I can make a new layer. Now I'm going to do this Here's another hotkey down here. If I hit X with my, if I hit X with my uh, key, you'll notice my color switch. Boom, boom. So, I, cause I wanted to switch to black. So now if I get my paint bucket, right? And then I just paint bucket. Now I'm in a new layer. Okay, my selection is still made. If I just paint, click really anywhere, boom. What's happened? Okay, I'll turn off this. I'll make a new layer that is, I go down here, right? If I was actually capturing the screen, 
um, with screen capturing software, this could be a really bitchin' tutorial. Anyways, I'm not prepared for that. This is just silliness right here. So, okay. Now, here's another thing. I can go into this, and if I hit Control I, no, sorry, wrong thing. Um, anyways, I just want to click into here and make white, okay, so that what I want to do is, okay, I'm going to hit uh, Apple D, and that deselects it. Now I'm hitting a paint bucket. You're going to say, oh no, I lost my image. No, that's on a new layer, which I'm going to put behind. So now look at what we've got. Okay, this is essentially what the design is going to be. That's freaking awesome. Wow. Um, because, right, I traced the actual photograph and then we inverted it. Damn. <laughs> uh, it's kind of like animation, right? It's like you do all this work. So here I did sign it because I want this to be a piece of art, right? This is a unique piece of art for my friend Star and her um, daughter, whose spirit animal is a lion. Wow, look at this. Okay, wow, I'm impressed. So I'm going to just clean up. So then what you could do here is, because um, really, ultimately, for the design, this has to be on a, um, a layer by itself. Uh, the way I have it now is it's kind of like a negative showing through that white. Um, but I want to actually... Well, what I would do is control, might as well do the real tutorial, control shift A, right? Control shift A selects all your layers. And so then as long as you have a layer that is selected, when you hit paste, something must not have happened correctly. Can do that. Uh, hold on. Okay. Um, this is not a YouTube uh, channel. So, actually, um, I was wrong. It's Control shift c That will... First, you want to hit Control a to select your entire image. Control shift c and then Control v and you will get a duplicate of your entire image. So, here that is. Then, what I would want to do is mess with the layers. Um, image. Adjust. Levels. Okay. So I want to get my blacks to be dark, right, and my whites to be, I want some variation because this can be, but I want my whites to be white. So it's a fine line here. So what I'm doing is I'm going into this layers and I'm just shifting it uh, based on what I think looks good. So, because I just, it's got to be a solid black and white image for me to put the color in there. Okay. So once you get it to be a completely black and white image, like that, looks freaking awesome. Okay. And just hit okay. And okay, so now that I have that, now I go up here and I can do select color range. Now, there's a million ways to do everything in Photoshop, but I'm just going to select uh, look, let's see, I'm coming in here, I'm just going to select one of these things, and then down here in this thing it shows your selection, but you can also control how strong of the selection it gets. I'm going to pretty much crank it up because I want it to get everything. Okay, so now I hit OK. So now, boom, it has the whole thing as a selection. And I could have sort of done this before by like inverting this selection, Probably, maybe this is like a redundancy, but because um, now what I want, now that I have this white selection, I'm going to put this image. Uh, sorry, I don't have to do image or anything. I just have to do paint bucket with my white. Let's just make sure, see, that wasn't perfectly white. So now I have a perfectly white, white paint bucket. Fill. Yep. Um, let me just show you another way to do that because that's fine. All right, BB. So instead of doing a paint bucket fill, um, if I already have this selection and I already have this white, I just duplicate this white layer, okay? And I hold it inside a mask. If I hold this white layer inside a mask, then 
it's it's still white and it's a mask um, but eventually I will want to make that mask be permanent okay so I'm just going to turn that off because that's essentially what this is so now if I turn everything off what you'll see is oh did my image disappear no let's make a new layer with black a black background okay we can put that anywhere okay BB my goodness he's on the floor being a crazy bird so okay paint bucket fill I've got a black background hmm. okay there's my design it's on this layer right now if I turn that off we can see that it's a checkerboard because this is what I need to upload and this is what I need to play with okay okay but let me, uh, let me just clarify that that this is what I need to upload if I want this to be on a regular shirt if I'm going to do a complete all-over print um, or something where I can control the background color then I can put the final design over black and have it be permanent okay Okay, so I'm going to wrap up this video here. Um, thing about Photoshop, you want to keep all your layers clean so that you can use your designs for future use. Uh, another thing that I didn't mention was my image size. Um, I made sure that when you're, if you're going to print something, you can't have screen resolution. Screen resolution is 72 DPI, but you need to have 300 DPI or whatever the printer. Uh, or the thing that your printing requires, which 300 DPI is a pretty good standard for good quality printing. So I made sure that this image, uh, that when I imported my drawing, I pasted it into a exactly 8,000 square image with 300 DPI resolution, so that um, no matter what I use this for, it's going to be really, really high quality. So something to keep in mind. Um, but yeah, I'm just going to end this video here. There goes BB. There he goes. Is he going home? Yep, he's going home. <laughs> so I'll end this video here. And uh, thanks for watching. Um, this isn't the usual animal video, but making t-shirts is something that I've been doing for over 10 years. Actually, when I was in high school, I was able to do some of the designed some of the t-shirts for the school plays and that was really fun to do a drawing and they send out the design and then hundreds of t-shirts come back you know and you see your friends you know wearing them all over the school so um, that's the kind of that's really what has always um, that's why I love making shirts is because it especially this artwork uh, it's only gonna be for these shirts so it's um, I like the idea of wearable art. You know, I can't really afford to buy much art. Um, but a t-shirt with some art on it, you know, you can get it affordable enough that, um, you know, people can celebrate it. So, and, and afford to. I don't know. I'm rambling again. More rambling videos. I'm trying to get better at that. <laughs> but uh, thanks for watching. And if you found this particular weird video uh, interesting, please comment because um, it helps me gauge, you know, what, um, what everyone's thinking. Thanks.